So here, uh, I'm going to talk about the infusion of uh, vasopressing medications, and usually these are time sensitive. So here, we have uh, norepinephrine or levofed, and here, we're infusing it at 30 ml an hour, and here it's 8 milligrams of levofed and 250 ml of uh, uh, fluid, and uh, the order is 16 micrograms uh, per minute for this patient. So, uh, like we talked about, you're going to record all these um, data beforehand, so now you come in, and the patient is being infused on this uh, IV fluids through the pump. So if you disconnect this to flush for, for a minute or two, the patient may decompensate if their pressure is very low. So you do not want to uh, do that. So there's several ways uh, you could approach this. Uh, and I'm going to basically demonstrate those ways here. So usually when you have uh, press for medications like PIVOFED, the patient is going to be uh, getting this to a, a central line. A central line is basically uh, a line it either uh, goes through a femoral uh, vein or goes through a subclavian vein, right? And uh, or it could go through an internal jugular vein. So when you come to the facility, you'll see you'll see a triple lumen device either sticking out here, over here, subclavian or internal jugular, right? It could be on either side of the body. So here, I want to point out there's uh, three. Uh, three lumens, right? That's why they call it triple lumen, three lumens, right? And even everyone is, is labeled. So the one with white, it says right here, this is the proximal uh, and it's 18 gauge. What it means proximal 18 gauge means the, the, the gauge size of this is 18 gauge and proximal means it's coming out of the proximal end of this, uh, 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 end of this uh, central line. Um, here we have the medial. Uh, here we have the medial. This is in the middle and it's 18 gauge as well. And this is going to be the, the distal tip and it's at uh, 16 gauge here. Right? So distal means all the way at the tip. Distal. Right? Middle is going to be in the middle right here if you see the holes. And uh, proximal is all the way uh, over here. So three places where the fluid comes out and this is going to be sitting in the patients um, uh, right here and another thing to remember if these are, things are closed they usually heparin instilled what that means is they put in heparin to keep these lines from clotting so before you if they're closed and there's not nothing being infused you don't want to just take this off and connect uh, your infusion uh, because you may basically push the heparin further you want to actually withdraw uh, fluid, uh, you want to withdraw the heparin, so you see a, a flashback of blood, and then you can connect your line. Another important aspect here, uh, if it's a central line, you want to have good uh, uh, sterile uh, conditions, so you uh, would want to wear a mask when you connect your lines, uh, sterile gloves preferably if you could do it, and basically watch uh, very carefully what you do, because this is, this is going basically into central circulation, and the possibility of giving a, a person a sep sepsis or septicemia, bacteremia, is very high. So be very careful. So I'm going to I'm gonna put this here because I'm going to actually infuse my fluids through here. So I'm going to tape this to my uh, can here. So. All right, so we said uh, triple lumen, we're going to use uh, norepinephrine, and we said it's going to be um, 8 milligrams of norepi into 50 ml of D5W. Uh, it's going to be uh, 16 micrograms a minute at a rate of t uh, 30 ml an hour. So um, we want to minimize uh, patient's time of the pump. So if this, is, if, this is the, if this is being infused here, like this, of, from their pump to the patient. So everything is flushed, everything is open. So imagine norepi right here is being infused through the hospital IV pump via central line. And you come and you have to transfer them to your IV. So one quick way to minimize patient's time of the pump is to use a 60 syringe. And this is really uh, 
fastest way to do it. And this is allowed by the manufacturer of the Alaris pump. So uh, don't worry about any gravitational issues. Uh, the manufacturer says that this is uh, uh, very easy to do and you sh uh, it's very safe to do. So the way you would approach this is first, you'll take a syringe, preferably you want a, a big gauge needle, 18, 16, whatever you could get. Um, basically this will facilitate a quick acquisition of the fluid. You'll put a tape over here and you take a Sharpie marker and you're going to write down the exact uh, medication. So here you write norepinephrine. You're going to write uh, infusion rate, 30 mLs an hour. And you're going to write 16 micrograms a minute. So this way, uh, your syringe is labeled and you know exactly what's in here. So then you want to take a piece of alcohol swab or chlorhexidine or whatever you may have. This is the, the port where they usually add medication. And this is the, uh, the port uh, you're going to take your medication from. So you're going to wipe it with alcohol, let it dry. Take your uh, syringe. And you're going to withdraw 60 cc uh, of fluid of the medication. And the beauty about this is while I'm withdrawing this fluid, the patient is not off the pump. They're still getting the medication they need. Their blood pressure is not dropping and they're not tanking, you know. So everybody's safe. Everybody's doing good. So withdraw, right? Close your needle, right? So what I like to do next is like I want to get all the air out and spell everything. So you're going to have a sharps container. Take the needle. And you're gonna put it in the sharps container. So on the top of the syringe, you'll have some air. I get it out. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a half set, the same one that we used before, right? I again do not uncoil it. I connect this to my half set and I flush it like so. And again, you see all the air coming out, all the air bubbles. You're gonna flush it to the point. Not until it starts dripping to the point where there is no air bubbles remaining in the tubing. So I'm pushing it down so this probably bring the plunger to a 50 ml point. Right? So now I'm, I'm, I'm happy it's flushed. I take my cassette. So come to the pump and here I'm going to set channel B. And we said it's going to be at 30 ml an hour. So 30 ml an hour. Enter. Uh, we said 50 mLs here. Down. Enter. And we didn't give any fluid, so clear. All right? So now we're good to go. So the beauty about this pump, I don't know if many people don't realize, uh, in, this, in this actual pump, uh, these Velcro straps here that people uh, abuse to no extent are actually made to hold your syringes, right? So because they've been stretched out, it's not going to be a nice, good uh, seal. So I'm probably crisscrossing here to hold it. So th this holds your syringe in place, right? And then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put your cassette in, make sure it's flush against. Press, press in, and advance the cord. So now, so now, I'm going to label it again. So we said it's Norad. You could write the rate if you want. So it's 30. All right. So then I press B, and I press start. So this pump, again, you're going to have to probably confirm in a second. It's going to start alarming that there's no, uh, nothing is closed. So now, now that it's infusing, patient is still on the hospital IV pump. They're not um, disconnected. So now you come in, obviously, when you're ready to transfer your IV fluids and the patient is um, ready to go. Obviously, you want to have your mask, you want to have your uh, alcohol, 
and this is gonna take basically one second. You're gonna come here, you're gonna disconnect the hospital uh, uh, norepi, you wanna clean it with alcohol prep, and then connect your own syringe, just so. Lower lock system, no problem. So this really minimizes time a uh, patient is on the pump, and uh, blood pressure will not tank. So I'm gonna show you, uh, this is, if you have the 60 cc syringe, you could request it in the ICU, get the uh, 18 gauge needle, very easy to do. If, uh, if you don't have a 60 cc syringe, I'm gonna show you another method of doing that. Um, so here will be another method of doing it. So imagine, again, we arrive at the facility, right? I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna snap this here. And I'm going to connect them back to the hospital uh, door at. So again, you came here and they're on hospital norepinephrine. They're being infused, right? They tell you no C60, 60C syringes, right? And you still uh, want to minimize the time of the pump. So one way of doing it, when, when you're ready to transfer, you come to the administration chamber here, right? You squeeze it and you fill it all the way to the top right you have a piece of tape here and this is going to be on an IV pole right you have your uh, full set all prepared full set basically the difference between a half set and a full set is this is a full set this is a half set and the full set has a, a, a administration chamber at the top and the half set does not so you would need to have to have a full set here or if you don't have a full set, you'll just have a, your basic IV administration set, uh, something like this. And in the end of it, you will connect your half set if you don't have a full set. So make sure this is already connected and ready to go, ready for spiking. So you'll come to the IV. Like I said, you're gonna squeeze it all the way up, fill it, you're gonna take off. You're gonna take off the mats, usually it's easier in the hospital. So you're gonna take it off, you're gonna invert it like this, and you're gonna remove the administration set. Right. So you're gonna take take this and you're gonna tape it. You're gonna tape it. Uh, to the IV pole, just like so. And this is the bag of norepi that you have. So the, the thing about this, patient is still on the pump, he still has enough of medication to infuse while you do your transitions. So he's not off the pump. So now you take the bag, here I have my full set. Take this off, I respike it. I come to my pump, right? I'm gonna hang it here for a second. Squeeze the chamber and then flush it. And again, flush it to the point of no air bubbles. So you see all the air bubbles coming out? Usually the higher you hang it, the faster it will flow. But I want you to pay attention to get all the air bubbles out. So once once all of them are out, I take my uh, set, open this up. So I'm going to come on the third channel, right? So we're going to put it again at uh, 30, we said. Thirty mLs an hour. Enter. So here it's about 100 mL. I 
and we gave nothing. So we cleared this. Go back to settle. Make sure it's flushed. All right. Open all your clamps. See, start. Again, label it. More happy. And once uh, you're all ready to go, then you come, uh, find the hospital's uh, infusion, open this up, clean it with alcohol, obviously, and connect your set. Once you finished, don't forget. <coughs> it's late, enough. So this is a little more tedious, but it works the same way. So you could you could either use uh, the 60 cc syringe, or you could use the half set the way I showed you. And if the rate is uh, 30 mLs an hour and you have uh, 50 mLs, we have uh, almost two hours of medications here. One other thing I want to point out uh, with this bag is uh, some uh, some may uh, show you to do the following technique. So. I showed you how to spike it, uh, really basic, uh, inverted. Uh, some uh, medics who like to throw bags in the legs and they don't care about hanging them. And there's obviously air here and air here, and that air may migrate. Uh, when you take this bag off, uh, and when you're ready to spike it with your half set, uh, full set, sorry. What you can do is, before you spike it, is try to get rid of as much air as out as possible. So all this is air. So. You squeeze the bag to get all the air out, and then and then you connect your set. And then when you connect it again, squeeze. So you you make this fully filled system, fully. Uh, so So by doing that, you squeeze all the air out. There's no air here. So when I'm doing transport and I toss this bag instead of hanging it, I toss it in the legs. I toss it on you know level with the patient. I'm not worried about any air bubbles migrating here and uh, uh, causing any alarms. So when you're transitioning, if you if you're gonna throw the bag down, you could squeeze all the air out and make it fully fluid filled. Um, so that's some one other technique that you could employ.